Dr. Charles Apoki is a 1984 graduate of the prestigious College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, Nigeria, and a master's degree holder in public administration. He is an ordained clergyman, an international conference speaker in several denominations, and a resource person to different companies and other organizations. He has traveled to several nations in Africa and Europe in the course of his ministerial duties. He organizes Word and Wisdom Conference, a capacity building conference that attracts several pastors, church leaders, and business people from different denominations. He is also the proprietor of Petra Christian Academy, a nursery primary and secondary school in Nigeria. He has been married for several years to his childhood friend, Felicia, and they have four children. He is also an experienced marriage counselor. Ladies and gentlemen, please receive Dr. Charles Apple. Dr. Charles Apoki is a 1984 graduate of the prestigious College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, Nigeria, and a master's degree holder in public administration. He is an ordained clergyman, an international conference speaker in several denominations, and a resource person to different companies and other organizations. He has traveled to several nations in Africa and Europe in the course of his ministerial duties. He organizes Word and Wisdom Conference, a capacity building conference that attracts several pastors, church leaders, and business people from different denominations. He is also the proprietor of Petra Christian Academy, a nursery primary and secondary school in Nigeria. He has been married for several years to his childhood friend, Felicia, and they have four children. He is also an experienced marriage counselor. Ladies and gentlemen, please receive Dr. Charles Apoki. Experience these great things. Thank you, Lord, for great responsibilities you are going to put in our hands. Thank you for grace to deliver. Pray, Lord, that the words we will hear will abide in our hearts. They will keep us uncomfortable. They will make us restless until we deliver our results. We will insist on results. We will demand results. We will execute results. And we will come back with great testimonies. In Jesus' name we pray. Please be seated. I want to thank you for coming. I also want to thank those of you who were in the first service. On Saturday, we spoke on becoming outstanding and um, the VCDs are available, the ones they recorded here, awesome. And um, the material, the booklets and an audio CD is also there. In the morning, first service, I spoke on becoming um, the power of knowledge and then uh, this second service I'll be speaking on becoming a financial giant because no matter how much knowledge you have if you don't have money you'll be despised I was looking for a passage in the Bible I think it's in Ecclesiastes or there about it said in his, I saw something that in a city that was besieged a wise man gave a solution to the salvation of the city but because he was poor he was forgotten so you can have knowledge and if you are poor your knowledge will not be relevant so we we'll dwell on that the wilderness of life what you were passing through looking for crabs and all that you were passing through the wilderness of life and it prepares you for greatness and I wrote a book refined by hardship I used it to celebrate my 60th birthday. Then, breaking your fallow ground. Then, entrepreneurship, a look into the future. I see several companies here. From the protocol man, I see companies. I was asking him. God will just bring money, get a few huge men like you with black t-shirts, make sure the t-shirts are undersized so that their muscles can show. You understand what I'm saying? With dark eyeglasses, 
they should put their hands in their pocket, whether there's a gun or not. So I just make it like that. Somebody will be suspecting there's a gun in it. And the way you are performing currently, you will do great business just having a protocol company. The broadcast, that's a great company. And so as I was, as I'm sitting down here, I'm just seeing companies from the choir. Give me phalange, somebody just shake me. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Sang very well. And then we can have a tailoring outfit in this place. Just produce the clothes we wear. T.D. Jakes has a tailoring outfit. All the clothes he wears are made by his company. He has 23 companies. He has, Walmart has his distributorship for his materials. Treasures of wisdom, unstoppable people, then the oil of marriage. I don't know if there are enough copies here. If you did married, you never read oil of marriage. You'll be an apprentice. You know sabi work. <laughs> when you read oil of marriage, you go sabi work. But it's not for married people. It contains nuclear materials. Hold on to your vision. And then the philosophy of the ant. Glowing out of darkness. I said yesterday that darkness prevents productivity. When you park a car on top of grass, the grass there will die. They will become yellowish. It is because they are not illuminated by light, sunlight. When sunlight comes with photons of energy, carbon dioxide and water will combine and form carbohydrates, and then oxygen will be liberated. So when there is no light, there is no productivity. Anywhere that there is no sunlight, people, I mean, productivity is very limited. And darkness is associated with underdevelopment. Somebody who has a dark mind is a wicked person. And so, underdevelopment is one of the major factors associated with religion. Go to the internet and browse poverty and religion. Research has shown that where people are very religious, poverty is inevitable. South America, where they are very religious, they are very poor. Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world. <laughs> no, it's, it's a non-statistic. It is something million people living below the poverty line. Do you know Nigeria is the open defecation capital of the world? We have more people defecating outside in Nigeria than any other nation. There is a joke about um, Jimmy Carter coming to visit Obasanjo. And they were going from the airport. And Jimmy Carter saw somebody defecating along the airport road. And uh, I told Obasanjo, I said, do you people still do this stuff? In this generation, Obasanjo just threw his mind away. He was thinking that he would hook uh, Jimmy Carter one day. As they were going, Obasanjo went to visit America. As they were going somewhere, they saw one black man doing the thing. Bastan just said, stop, 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 stop. Jimmy, see somebody doing what you saw in Nigeria here. They went near the man. As the man saw Bastan just said, Baba, mo kiyo, mio, mo kwe, wo, wa. <laughs> it was a Yoruba man. <laughs> Even in America. <laughs> so, one of the things we need to deal with is poverty. And how do we, you see, millionaires are not prayed into existence. Sometimes the length of your prayer is a measure of your stupidity. Because when you hold a key to a door, you don't knock. Nigeria prays for censors. Samuel, you don't pray for censors. Count the people. You don't pray for good elections. Set the machinery in place. We are, we are going to be judging court cases from now till maybe the next three years. We have been doing one court case on certificate, certificate. 
whether Buhari gets certificate or not. Headsmen are not problems in developed societies. The average Brazilian cow and the average Saudi Arabian cow produces 30 to 40 liters of milk a day. These ones that are suffering in our streets. <laughs> Fulani headsmen is a sign of backwardness. Burim, they, they produce, these ones in Nigeria produce only one liter of milk a day. <laughs> you can't just even see the day. The, the. In developed societies, they won't approve them for consumption. <laughs> when I never saw you both cow before. <laughs> Burundi has more has four cows per person. I mean uh, Botswana, they have four cows per person. They don't have herdsman crisis. So nearly everything you see in Nigeria, the Nigerians went for a conference in. Um, in, the, in Europe, and um, is it Europe or South Korea, electricity went off briefly. They shout, they only the Niger they may, hey! <laughs> then they were ashamed of themselves because no other person shouted. <laughs> Many of the demons we cast out in Africa and in Nigeria good health and good food and good salary will eliminate them. Eating in your dream, now long throat you get, you'll be thief. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 8. When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from the window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. Romancing Rebekah. Holy man. <laughs> so Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she's really your wife. Why did you say she's my sister? Isaac answered him, because I thought I may lose my life on account of her. Verse, um, 20, verse 12. So Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that Isaac's father had dug in the time of his father Abimelech and the, the uh, father Abraham, the Philistines, stopped up, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. Look up. Here was famine. Famine might be a sign of punishment. Famine can represent the darkest time in a man's life. Because there will be disease, there will be scarcity, there will be lack. There will be transferred aggression. But Isaac was romancing his wife. Why? He had, he had wealth. He had enough. And so, how did Isaac become wealthy? How do people become rich? Remember that when Rebecca was being interviewed, for marriage, I'll come to that later. When Rebecca was being interviewed for marriage, the Bible says that the servant Eliezer said, the girl that will say, I will tell, fetch me water for my camels. I mean, for, for me to drink. And then she will respond, I will water your camels too, will be the girl that my master will marry. A camel drinks 30 gallons of water. Times 10, that's 300 gallons. A gallon is 4 liters. That means a camel drinks 120 liters of water. That means 10 camels is 1,200 liters of water. 
That means if you divide it by 20 liter jerry cans, it's 60 liter jerry cans of water. 60 liter jerry cans of water times uh, the, uh, 20, 1,200 liters times 10, which is acceleration due to gravity, times the distance to the well, <laughs> plus the distance from the well up, the well that was in John chapter 4 in Sica was excavated in 1945. It was 138 feet deep. So, 138 feet deep times acceleration due to gravity times 1,200. If the well had an inclination, you have to multiply it by the coefficient of the angle of inclination. <laughs> I know book. I go school. Now they hold this place, Waka, with dirty beards. And you know no book. Now when you know book, and then you get anointing like me, and you can't get money like me, then you can have swag, man. Even at the age of 60, you're still swagging. So, <laughs> Isaac married capacity. When Rebecca got to Isaac, he was in the farm meditating. So there are some seeds you will need in life before I enter the main message. Number one, you must Christ must be formed in you. When Christ is, is formed in you, you operate beyond installed capacity. Number two, you must have character. Character. Anointing can make you vibrate, but character will stabilize you. The next thing is that you must develop capacity. How much can you handle? You see that girl was fetching 1,200 liters of water. How much can you handle? If she can't take care of camels, she can't marry an Isaac. What can you handle as a young girl? It's not enough to get pregnant. Animals get pregnant. It's not even... <laughs> and they deliver twins. It's not even enough to have Johnny Messies. A lizard can lose his tail and still get home safely. Cockroaches can lose two legs and get home safely. So that you are alive, when you Africans pray, we are alive now. Some people are in the mortuary. Some people in the mortuary are better than you. <laughs> there, there, there was a man, they asked a woman in Abba, a guest speaker, Putanezi. If your husband is dead, please come outside. One woman came outside. And the husband was sitting in front. <laughs> I think I should be a comedian. <laughs> and they said, they said, <laughs> That's what we are saying. It's only those whose husbands are dead should come forward. Then the, 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 the guest speaker also knows the husband. He pointed to the husband. Onya Abu Digi, is this one not your husband? The wife made like this. Onya Abu Dindu. He said, whether this one, they are alive. This one, this one, they are alive. So somebody in the mortuary is better than that husband that is alive. Capacity. How much can you handle, baby? How much can you handle as a young man? In the Niger Delta, we hate work. We are easily frustrated. We are easily angry. We behave like our masquerades. They always carry machete or cane to pursue people. So, <laughs> competence. How much can you handle well? Then chemistry. Can you blend with greatness? Will you not steal spoon in a dinner party? Yeah. 
If you can't blend with greatness, then greatness will run away from you. You understand? Chemistry. Can you blend with responsible people? Blend. You, 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 you enter a governor's house, you know how to carry yourself. You do. There are cameras everywhere. When I enter a place, the first place, I know where the camera is in your office. I saw it. When I enter a hotel, I'll cover the, this thing whether the person, somebody will call me from reception. In Israel, cover it. They will call you because they have cameras. So you, you, people are watching you. Nobody will promote an irresponsible person. Yeah. You actually are walking in the street. You are chewing gum. Your future father-in-law is watching you. <laughs> Somebody wants to marry my son. You come, you are dragging your feet. I will kick your bum, baby. When my son brought his Kenyan babe. Boy, see babe. I was chatting... <laughs> I was chatting with her yesterday. I saw how, why my son fell in love. <laughs> Only the skin, you can use that put to rub it and swallow it. <laughs> and then, the phonetics, the way she was speaking, I said, boy, see, I said, get pregnant quick, will you can't marry. Don't marry. They want to go and do one court wedding in Denmark. I said, do the Denmark one. Let's go to Kenya and spoil Kenya for you. <laughs> then when we marry, get pregnant quick and born fine grand became for me. <laughs> she blends with us. The one day my younger son wants to marry. She's an ophthalmologist. They treat eyes. In Papa and a doctor. In younger brother and a doctor. The next one, an engineer. In my man, a mathematician. And then me, I balance. <laughs> you, you, you think we will need long fasting and praying? <laughs> Ancestral courses are not there, very far away. <laughs> Chemistry. Can you blend into a great family? Can you work with a great company? And listen, any man you work with that you are too comfortable with, you will not progress. Yeah. Work with a man who keeps you on, his, on your toes. Yeah. Somebody who can shout at you. Yeah. Somebody who can holler you. Somebody who can keep you awake. Now, let me quickly talk about financial giants. Financial giants are those who stand head and shoulders above their contemporaries in finances. There are about 2,000 billionaires globally. I'm not one of them. However, I've read severally and I'm practicing what I've learned from them and I'm growing away from my environment financially. Now, you don't, this is your job mentality. Work, work. You were trained to be civil servants. The kind of schools you went to, the British schools. You didn't go to American schools. American schools train you to be entrepreneurs. That's why you are called grade level. They grade you and they level you. And in fact, civil servant means you are a civilized slave. That's why they not tie for you so that I can reduce blood supply to your brain. <laughs> Do you, have you noticed that rich men wear jeans trousers and wear t-shirts? Those who work for them wear coats. This coat, this blanket you wear, don't look at me like that. And this tie in a very hot weather, it's a sign that your brain has been compromised. <laughs> because what will make you rich sometimes is below you. I never knew Dango to plant rice until I was seeing it being advertised on CNN. So, how do people become financial giants? I'm not talking about stolen wealth. A nation where politicians are richer than businessmen is a corrupt nation with gross elite capture. Businessmen are supposed to be richer than politicians and sponsor politicians. Now, 
A lot of financial giants cultivated. Someone say cultivated. cultivated. You cultivate it. You nurture it. Strong desire. Someone say strong desire. strong desire. You don't grow rich casually. There must be a strong desire. There were times I used to carry books. My shoulders would peel. When I reached Rumokoro, I need to cross, a, cross the road and then take a, ta a taxi to Eleme, then to go to Aba. I have recorded overnight, folded books, duplicated overnight. I will carry them on my shoulder, carry one here, sit on motorbike. My shoulders will peel. Today, I don't do that. I have six drivers. I have nine vehicles in my compound. There's no vehicle I want to buy. Some of them might not even go to bank. I'll just go and cut one small piece of land and sell. And I buy it. But there was that time, this strong desire. You must detest poverty. Begging has become a culture in the Niger Delta. Now who he help? Mumu, who you help to? <laughs> poor man can get bad mouth. And poor man is never satisfied. When you are paying poor man and you have a bundle of money, he's looking at the one in your hand. The one that they give you never do for your day. So there are key words. You cultivate it. You have a strong desire. You must desire to be rich. I hate to beg. I hate to be intimidated. I hate to owe house rent. I hate to owe school fees. The problem with poverty is that it is anesthetic. Poverty kills the pain of insult. You don't feel insult. A poor man does not feel insult. And he has, he has pride with poverty. The greatest combination, evil combination, is pride with poverty. And by answer people, you are proud. Proud even in poverty. You live, a house, you live in a house built with asbestos. But when you come outside with coral beads of 250,000. It requires commitment. We'll look at that. And it requires starting early in life. Some of you are already late. You are doing carryover. And you don't know because in, a, in environments like the Niger Delta, we are unnecessarily happy. The man in the Niger Delta is unnecessarily happy. How many of some people I don't see they dance? The people ruling you. I mean, <laughs> Poor people are unnecessarily happy. Poor. You are living with your father here and you are 30 years old and you are playing loud music. I should, they should I'm moving head you on. <laughs> to cultivate means to tend and to grow. It involves the following piece for wealth. Number one, planning. You must plan. I plan to marry early because I don't want to train children in old age. Number two, I plan to establish businesses early so that my children can take them over. I stopped medical practice at 40. My son in a few years time will become a consultant surgeon. Trained in Germany. He was telling me that his posting now is in uh, vascular surgery. They are operating on veins and arteries. Operating on the heart. So the practice I sold, if he comes back to Nigeria, the kind of surgeries we are going to be doing, consultation alone, there's one new surgery for prostate, is the prostatic artery embolism technique. You pass a catheter into the prostate artery, prostatic artery, then block it so that there's reduced blood supply and then it will shrink. Do you know the man coming from America to do that surgery? His, uh, 
his to register to take card is uh, five thousand. To see him is sixty five thousand. That means registration and evaluation is seventy thousand already. And if he sees one hundred prostate patients, is seven hundred thousand. So, you, you plan ahead. My son is, I told you, he's doing PhD in software engineering. When I opened the polytechnic, he's going to be director. The one that came with me now has a master's degree in educational psychology or guidance and counseling psychology. So when the Ministry of Education people come, my wife would just... There was a lady that came to bring the child, brought the child to our school. She was trying to form psychedelic. We just released her. <laughs> so I want to know the curriculum and the distance. My daughter, do you know scheme of work? Do you know the difference between scheme of work and curriculum? She said, no, he said, please lecture me. And the time she finished with her, she was humbled. And we did interview for the child, the child failed. She left there humiliated. So, you don't let, don't let sex be a form of an entertainment among your youths now. You, you're, what I hear on your Facebook, you carry kukumba, you carry yam in between. You are a fool. Are you a farmer? Does kukumba right check? Particularly German, you like women too much. Say, carry kukumba. Carry the chopped banana. Stupid human being. <laughs> Your brain is rotting. So, <laughs> it's plan your life. Where do I want to stay? At what age do I want to do this? At 40, I said I was not practicing medicine. 40, I sold the hospital and moved on. Then, it involves principles. You have to understand principles. I don't eat my money raw. All those I was preaching with at an early age, they were spending their money anyhow. I was investing my own in land. Where I'm building a school for my wife, I bought that land 300,000. 300, Today, the value of the plots we are building on is about 28 million. Just few years back. When others, my co-in-laws and my in-laws were selling, buying cars, those cars have paralyzed. They are no longer useful, but the price of my land has gone up. I don't know if you follow what I'm saying. So it involves principles. When you own property, you own part of the earth. And prices of properties rarely fall. They always go up. So, it involves procedures. The Bible says, build your business first before you build your house. I might not be surprised that you are living in a rented apartment. Because you might be building this place now that to build a palace will not be difficult when all these young men become multimillionaires. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. But the average young person builds an image, false packaging, that you cannot defend or protect. So you park three cars in front of another person's building. You are a madman. So, it involves principles. It involves procedures. One of the procedures you must adopt as a young man when you start business is called presentism. Presentism is the effect of your presence in your business place in a regular basis to attend to the needs of your customers and make them feel happy and wanted. Don't be a director without a direction. You must be in your business place when you start. It is not yet time to delegate. You must form what I call sweat capital. Do some of the things on your own, then you master the trade, then you can correct people. A lot of you think that you can become great by assumption. 
greatness is end. Then philosophies. I want to leave every person I meet better than I met him. When you have this principle that every person and every place you enter, you leave that place and leave that person better than you met him, they will always call for you. And if you treat men like trash, you can't get their cash. When you treat men like royalty, you get their loyalty. So Agafure used to load motors on his own vehicles. Agafure will load. One woman dashed him 20 naira one day. They told him that that's the Agafure. So parents bring children to my school because they know I will always be there. Or my wife is there. Or my daughter is dead. You see, the problem in the Niger Delta is that you find it difficult to have people to walk under you that are as reasonable as yourself. You always bend down to instruct people. Put tomatoes. Do this one. You know, you know say, a young man, people pay 250000 to stay in a hotel. The person that took them to the hotel, to the rooms, he said, Madam, I better close this door. May snake not enter. <laughs> Do you see the way you got? So, you are telling them that there are snakes in this compound. And the girl that went to one of the girls, I cannot stay here. They had to refund 250000 that had been paid because the idiot. <laughs> doesn't understand hospitality. Then there are practices. You see, this church is not what it is. You see, see the faces of these people here. There are some churches when you see their choir and you see their people on... Uh, they, they, they are not ashamed. They also go on satellite. You see their faces. They look like headsmen that came to church. <laughs> Don't you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> As my face hard reached, so they are all shrunk. <laughs> poverty will just be shouting poverty, poverty, poverty. poverty. <laughs> The eye eats first before the mouth. So processes. You see, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing processes here. Before I arrive, the man is already phoning. And the good thing, well, I notice he doesn't shout when he's phoning. I tell them, say, doctor, don't they near you? Doctor, don't they near you? Doctor, don't they? When I don't ready, tell, uh, tell uh, ABCB, say, make, you. Uh, make sure, say, that place when water, they clean and come out before doctor making a come Momo. <laughs> and the problem I have with some of you here, you are not learning from what you are seeing. You are not learning from what you are seeing. Most people say I, I, they want me to mentor them, but they don't want to live like me. I flogged my guest speaker one day. I flogged people. Flogged crazy, uh, crazy madness out of their head. My guest speaker was owing 1.2 million. A Yoruba man gave him 1.2 million to be paying back 100,000 every month. This Uroba boy went and bought plasma TV. <laughs> then paid deposit for second hand card. When he told me, <laughs> my head got crazy. I locked the door. I brought out cane. I said, open your full. <laughs> He went and told his wife, say, doctor, flog me. He said, I said, I don't tell you. I said, I put him under pressure. Every month I will phone him, have you paid the Yoruba man 100000 You can't become great without imitating what greatness does. How people become great. There are some neurons in your brain called the mirror neurons. Even some animals have it. That's the ability to copy what another person is doing. And if your mirror neurons are not functional, do you know Nigerians go to London and still behave like village people? Because far away when they sleep roof for Ghana Ghana, you carry and go to London, they go to sleep roof until you do washing and setting on the brain. And the problem in the Niger Delta is that we don't have good models. We don't have Wale Shenka. We don't have people who, it's thugs that are models. Thugs.
People who should not speak in decent environments. Wait a minute. I was in a government house to speak. After speaking, the wife said, Who's this man? Let him come and speak again. I spoke, they were recording us. She just brought money, envelope. As if I'm a beggar. I read medicine like your husband. I went to the same secondary school with your husband. Even this Okawa that was there, we went to we in the same hall. When I was a crook, we drank 100 cartons of beer in a night, Bob Marley night. The Mokuwa no near now. <laughs> we shark finish, we still go read. Because the brain had been ogogoronized right from here. <laughs> so then for me to come to go, uh, the governor's house, I finished speaking. You are bringing two lousy envelopes to put in my hand. I returned them to her and said, Madam, we need to encourage people like you. <laughs> my wife got angry. But governorship has expiring date. My anointing has no expiring date. Even after we are dead, our CDs will still be playing. Our books, we will start eternal life from here. There are those of you who are going to become millionaires after this seminar. You will still remember me. And so I will, I will live in you even after I'm gone. And a governor that does not contribute anything to your life, by the time he leaves, you say, even if you, somebody, somebody heard that one president is dead, he said, oh God, when will you remember Nigeria? <laughs> the, people, the people are as frustrated. Practices, processes, they must be applied in the deliberate act of cultivation. You can't be Dr. Poki without knowing how I have so much knowledge in my head. You can't understand that my wife wakes up 4 a.m. every day. Since I married her, only one day she has overslept. She will cook mama put for our school, 500 students, eating rice that my wife cooks. My wife is stronger than seven men, including me. <laughs> and you don't intimidate any member of my wife's family, and by extension, us. You can't intimidate my wife. And so I marry her with wisdom. <laughs> if not, the marriage goes scattered. If I push her a little bit, and she wants to push back. I'll just do like this. <laughs> because I need her more than she needs me. If she divorces me, the children will follow her. Because I'm too harsh as a father. I don't know whether my children really love me. Because <laughs> I'm a crazy man sometimes. <laughs> they should be paying my wife allowance for marrying me. The desire for financial growth usually starts by inspiration. You must have this inspiration. A comfortable compound where the landlord does not trouble you is a bad omen. Because you will never think of parking. A job where all your needs are met, like working in the bank, they give you a car with a driver, air conditioned, you are counting people's money, just like the oil companies, they send you on vacation with your lazy wife who oh, can deliver children in Dubai, deliver children in London to become British citizens. Didn't you see poor people in the UK? They must burn you for UK before you become human being. <laughs> Harold's supermarket is owned by an Egyptian, not a British person. So, you now marry a lazy wife and you don't have a petrol station. You don't have a gas plant. Because the comfort of working in an oil company anesthetizes the inspiration to become rich. If somebody is paying you two million for your being offshore, I mean uh, offshore, for two weeks, and then you come onshore, why don't you use the onshore time to generate four million for yourself? And if your wife is not working in the oil company, why can't she build a company? And you will retire. You don't have a consultancy firm. 
Because they have transferred you from here to here, from here to here, you have become a bolt that can easily be replaced. So, you need some, and so sometimes poverty, discrimination, oppression is the stimulus God needs for some of you to be inspired. Some of you are like wheelbarrows. When you carry a vision and a dream and a purpose, unless somebody pushes you, you cannot move. And then, daddy can, don't become a towing van. Any person here will know one who can live on. <laughs> Any person will know one who can live on. Because some of us in leadership in the Niger Delta, we are like towing vans. And when you tow a vehicle, they, they just follow you. And even if you want to push some of you to start, your ignition is not on. And when your ignition is not on, no matter how much we push you, you can wear coat here yeah, and dress well and be fashionable. And you don't have an inspiration of what you want to become, this church will just be a nightclub for you. And if you are hearing what you are hearing now, and you are not changing, you are a witch. Only. You don't, don't look for another person. You. You be witch, you be Ogbanje. You be Amosu and uh, Ome and everything combined together in one unit. Very wicked human being to yourself. <laughs> Did you hear what you are hearing now when you were at their age bracket? Inspiration. And inspiration can come from observation. You know, when I go to the, I, I went to um, this hotel, um, Hilton Hotel. No, Sheraton. I saw people, their children and themselves were living in Sheraton. They live in Sheraton. <laughs> and the floor of the house I left was <laughs> living in Sheraton. When I go to the airport, I was seeing my friend off then. When I just reached the gate, the policeman, I don't know how he knows that I'm not traveling. He said, stop. <laughs> go back. You know, poverty has an aura. <laughs> you walk very humbly. You... I said, God, I want to travel. I want to move. Until a pastor called me. I drove my car, got there late. Uh, the car stopped at Undele because the car then, water used to pass through the floor to touch my wife's leg. He goes, but how can they touch my leg? <laughs> I don't say anything. I know what they happen. You need to wear a boot inside the motor. <laughs> and, and, then, and then the car stopped at Ndele. And one doctor managed to tow, one man managed to tow me to Uniport and park the car. I got there. I met the man. He said, doctor, why did you come late? I said, Satan attacked my motor. He <laughs> said, don't say that thing. I've been observing that car. It is old. It's not devil. It's age. I say, when you finish preaching, I'm giving you a car. Can't see anointing. <laughs> when I knew a car was waiting for me. The Lord is good, somebody. I said, no matter the circumstances you are passing through, God is able to shock you. He's able to answer your prayers even before you pray. He said, before you pray, I have heard. The Lord is good, somebody. Shout amen. <laughs> Motor day outside the way. <laughs> the... <laughs> The good life is good, baby. The good life is good. So, he said, doctor, are you with your passport? I said, yes. And I was carrying the passport. I was writing on the back of my books, an international conference speaker. I never come to Nigeria. I was believing God for it. So, he said, you are going with me to South Africa to open our branch church. You'll be our guest speaker. See me. Gave passport. They brought multiple visa. As I was approaching the airport that day, I don't know how the policeman knew. <laughs> oh, poverty. Yeah. <laughs> you see, worldliness is very relative. When you are poor, if your wife demands for 20000 to do shopping, that's worldliness. And if you're a civil servant, 200000 is worldliness. But if you are a billionaire... And your wife wants to go to Dubai with three million. It is not worldliness. It's just appropriate. It's just adequate. And she, I'm, 
am I talking to somebody? So don't criticize rich people. Anything you criticize, will you short circuit it. When you admire them, they will inspire you to perspire to acquire. So, now, some people come from business families that their father taught them, like Dangote. Others had platforms provided for them. Others, true marriage. I will share two things with you now. They are very wicked things. Young girl, don't marry below your social class. If you marry below your social class, instead of you growing, you will be dragging an idiot. And men are stupidly proud. When you are correcting, poverty is addictive. When you are correcting him what to do to become great, he thinks you are insulting him. He is always easily angry and irritated. You become too expensive for him and he says you are worldly. And it's difficult to advise a poor man. Because a poor man is like a wall. You hardly pass him to anywhere. So, now, if you marry below your social class, marry potentials, marry possibilities, marry drive, marry a future, marry a man who is willing to break barriers, marry a man who values womanhood, a woman is not a piece of furniture. And young girls, don't make yourself the last piece of furniture in a man's house. Don't become a baby factory. Every year you deliver like a Hebrew woman, but your brain is... <laughs> marry upward. And young men, marry a woman that can take you, if you marry into wealth... Humble yourself. Learn the processes and the procedures and the principles of that family. Adapt them. Take the man as your father. I have a bishop. Anytime he gives offering, it's 1.2 million every Sunday. The daughter is the administrator of the account. Married to a young man who is also into construction. But the young man has tapped into the grace of the father, father-in-law. He's called father-in-law. Not fighter-in-law. Fighter so, but there are two types of entrepreneurs. One is a necessity entrepreneur. That's what most people from the, from, from the Niger Delta are. People when going to business because of nothing to do. This one when work, not day. Anything shall make we just do. Because you don't have a passion. Because you don't have inspiration. Because you don't have an original thought. Any challenge you see, you will run away. That's why most women whose husbands open store for them, they usually fail. But you have opportunity entrepreneurs. Opportunity entrepreneurs are those who see if anywhere there are problems, if you can provide solution, you will become rich. Don't complain. I pass my neighbor is because of darkness. Kekena Pep is because of transport problem and poor roads. I was coming to preach in Bayelsa on a, on a Friday near Camp Pobeni. Camp Pobeni. I, I saw Kekena Pep packed. Muslims owned them. Bayelsa boy putting his hand in his pocket. The idiot becoming a cultist. While people who came from nowhere have taken a pep. They are fetching water for you. That's how they did in Sierra Leone. They come from Guinea. Their original place is Guinea. The Futajalon Mountains. They are called Fullers in Sierra Leone. They came to Sierra Leone. They were fetching water. They would lie down and eat cola nut and starve. As at now in Freetown. They are buying the Christian houses. Started small. They saw a need. The church man, we are the only religion that pray with our eyes closed. And so opportunities are there. What you pray away from your life will remove a lesson and a blessing. 
until you learn the lesson, you'll be repeating the course. We have in carryover. The problems we have in Bielsa are a, an opportunity for you to render a service, provide a solution. Huh? Once you provide solution, darkness, dark nations are opportunities when you come with light. I don't know if you are following me. The problem with the black man, the white man will need to come to him for him to discover oil in Uliobiri. I was discussing with you, Chinese people have come to buy our plantain stem. They want to use them to produce something. Banana is used to produce wine in, in Uganda. Uganda. Even in those states, the fruit juice companies are blending their papa and their bananas to produce. There's a tomato factory now in Benin. They're using greenhouse. They're producing tomato paste. Why is it that the black man that brought Christianity to you was thinking of going to the moon and your own song was, it won't be long, we'll be going home, can the ways as days, any day now, even if you reach heaven, what in you, you could show God. He asks you, you marry, say, God, I know marry your bride price too high. <laughs> you build house, cement price too dear. Uh, you win election. Ah, let me. Uh, Dixie, no, allow me. Do this, do that, do that. Did they allow person? <laughs> it is youth that removed president of Sudan. Youth, 20 something year old girl. Called him. It is youths that are protesting in Hong Kong. Even if you die now, waiting you lose you, you are still. <laughs> no, if you die now, waiting you lose, then you go cry. And why you date for seven years? Poverty and unproductivity. You don't reach 35, marry you, they fear. You don't they go 40 to talk to girl, they hurt you because of poverty. Sister, I'm going to talk to her. I'll discuss something with you after the service. I say, read the power fill your hook you. The sister, they wait patiently. <laughs> Today is my day. My prayers have been answered. My season of impact has come. Broken. Oh, no. See, now, wow. <laughs> Dr. Pokey, very funny man. You know, see, rain when one fall. Now, rain again, need. <laughs> there are. Somebody say, Lord, shine my eyes. If you must be a financial giant, you must have value for small things. Most people, Bill Gates started from his garage. Um, Harley Davidson started from a garage. Bill Gates will walk in those days and fall at the door of Melinda. Melinda will drag him inside, bath him and feed him. So, there are small things you must grow. You can grow them. So, you, have value, you must have value for information. What is happening? Value for information. Uh, not a uh, uh, so -so -so person fight this one. This one, Baru kick uh, Kowa. No. Ojuku karate this person. He knows as they beat when he's he still richer than you. Even if they're breaking, even if to say he died, then children no go suffer. Somebody went travel overseas, go eat new, new yam. Yam for yourself. You defeat eat yam for yourself. <laughs> value for information value for opportunities that they can how many people you don't give opportunities when failed how many people you don't give money when no come pay back again how many people you don't give money when no they come church again I don't play with opportunities value for little sums small money always think of how to impregnate the small money to make it grow I started my publishing business with 35,000 naira. It has grown. You must have value for ignored opportunities. What people have ignored and value for relationships. Poor people don't know how to keep relationships because they have a temper problem. 
poor people always bang doors when they are leaving. They never know how to think that I might need this person someday. Because poor people always live for the immediate. Even if you want to break with a girl, break smoothly. She might be the vice chancellor that will need to admit your son one day. Am I talking to somebody? Then you must have value for duty. That thing that is given to you. Most of what you are doing here now, you are not serving the decay. When I was ushered to Archbishop Benson Idaosa, it was when they introduced him to, to this between that I'm a medical doctor. He prayed for me. I ran the church school as if it was my personal school. So my school cannot fail. Why is it that all the great musicians are coming from Christ's embassy? I'll be speaking on the uh, 4th of October at uh, the hub. Messi Chin War, all of them, all of them will be there. That young man studied history and international relations. Easy, easy concept. But that flair for music, he has built a big company out of it. What are you doing here? I saw the choir singing. Can't you form a group that can be of international standard? The reason most of you don't extrapolate what you do is that you are looking at it as if you are serving a man. You are not seeing it as a potential for your future. The saxophonist here, there's, there's a saxophonist. The saxophonist here will not think of blowing the hymns. Do you know most of the church music in Africa, we can't read with them. Jesus on him, Mary in here, Jiri Buruchi, in here, Burujirichi, in here, let that don't fall for Macha, 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 Macha. I can't read with such music. Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Then somebody say, commitment again. Jesus said, don't you know I shall be about my father's business? He grew in stature and wisdom and obtained favor from God and man. Michelangelo said, if people know how hard I worked to get my mastery, it wouldn't seem so wonderful after all. For Isaac to be very rich, he became committed. Christopher Motley rightly said, big shots are only little shots. Who kept on shooting? They kept on shooting. You young men of today's generation, you want soft work. You call it smart work. The man that went to speak in uh, one black university in the United States, he said every person is smart now. Every person is smart. All of smartphone, you reason fast. So to, we need to go back to working harder than the person that is equally smart with you. Putting more effort. Dangote sleeps by 2 a.m. Geniuses don't sleep early. It's only poor people that snore by 7.30. You know, poor man likes sleep. As he's watching television. <sighs> Changing gear of sleep. <laughs> Dangote sleeps by 2 a.m. and wakes up by 6 a.m. Bishop Moyedeko leaves his office by 2 a.m. and he is back by 7.30 a.m. You don't get to be financially great by speaking in tongues alone. Sometimes people will think you are mad. It was not even so in the biblical times. Then risk taking. Somebody say risk taking. Say it again. You must learn to take risks. Coca-Cola, the man that bought it from Chandler, took a risk. John, I mean, bought it, Chandler bought it from John Pemberton. He took a risk. The man who invented jeans was not Levi Strauss. It was somebody else. But Levi Strauss bought the patent and registered it in the Supreme Court. It was only a pin that the man pinned here and pinned in the edges. Jeans was from Tapolin. 
that was used to make tents in the, uh, in the Sacramento Valley during the gold rush. So people were wearing it in a different way, but it was loosening and the man decided to put a pin, put pin here so the edges did not loosen. That's how levies came into existence. Rich people don't stay in one locality. They learn to move away and establish, take risks to meet people, take risks to go to places. Rich people, somebody, I was watching a, a video, the man said, if you take a rich man and he falls down to the level of poor people, he will still leave them and become rich. The ability to leave country makes you grow rich. That is, you must learn to leave. Mama Boye's food is sweet, but there are other restaurants that can be built. Am I right? There are other food joints that can be built. Learn to leave. If a palm tree is planted in a bucket, it will not grow big. It either destroys the bucket or the bucket destroys it. Sometimes we don't need you around us. It is better you go to London and call Daddy Ken. Sir, can we open our London branch now? No. I don't need to be here with my wife any longer. That's why I came with my daughter. Because she has to manage what is there. Build what is there. Romance does not immediately turn to wealth. You can kiss your mouth until your lips turn peel. Somebody called my wife. They wanted to embarrass me in my church. They said, they want to do couples question, quiz, me. <laughs> me when they opened the door for a woman. Couples quiz. Say, sit down, sir. Then they took my wife outside. Sir, when did you kiss your wife last? I said, it has stayed. <laughs> we don't kiss often, it has stayed. What is the size of your wife's shoe? I said, she doesn't know it, she has it. I say, what my wife, only thing I know, she doesn't like high heel. What my wife does is that she goes to the place, buys shoe, put her leg, size her leg, and I carry her and come out. <laughs> what is your wife's best color? I say, I don't know. I don't know. The idiot did not ask me what is the wife of my, size of my wife's brazier. If I want to buy brazier for my wife and I don't know the size, I will just use my hand to measure the breast <laughs> and carry it like this. I won't greet people. I won't shake people. Any brazier that size is for my wife and I bring it back. So they now called my wife. Madam, what is the size of your shoes? I don't know. When did you kiss your husband? Like, ah, you don't think. Uh, what is your best color? I don't like dark. I mean, bright colors. What is your best food? Is I eat anything? You see, romance, 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 romance. You know, they feed person. You know, they pay house rent. When you can't reach this age, as I told them yesterday, the engine don't spoil. Crankshaft don't weak. We sleep on the same bed. She will be naked. I will climb over her. Not the apple. Everything paralyzed. Everything jaga jaga. Everything scatter scatter. In those days when she was younger, I would just see her. Never would just connect electricity. <laughs> they would ask me, now food, now food, now food. Nowadays you have to wind the engine. Gru, 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 gru. Pour anointing oil before the tea will start. And within a few minutes, you are gasping like a cow that tried from Kavansha. So what is it you are running after? Romance, romance. Why didn't you kiss me? Why didn't you call me? I send you money for recharge card. I will phone you again, Mumu. You don't get sense. That he can make a hand for you now. Okay, make a hand for you. Come on. Let's, stand up, let us pray. Stand up, let us pray.